All right, so I was um, going to make a video about this uh, vintage Superman record player. It's a, a DJ, a phonograph company um, record player, one of their DP models. And so we were going to take it apart and I was going to look inside of it and we were going to see how they built stuff back in the 70s, these little kids' toys like this. And I ran into a problem uh, when I was trying to get it apart. In fact, I haven't been able to get it apart at all because of this problem. So let me bring you in closer and show you what I'm dealing with and show you how I'm going to fix it. Okay, so the culprit is these security screws. I cannot for the life of me find what bit fits these security screws. And these are different from normal screws because these features jut out instead of recess uh, like a normal screw would. Now, a normal push person would take and, and just um, cut a slit through this and, and get it out or take a pair of pliers and, you know, just twist them out. But I'm not like that. So I'm going to try my best to make a tool to get these specialty screws out. So let's go to the machine shop and see how I'm going to do that. So here we are in the beautiful PTI machine shop without permission. I'm going to try to make a tool without making something explode and making my boss mad at me. So what I'm going to do, if, if uh, we can see this right here, I'm going to take a tri-wing bit, a normal tri-wing bit. It's just in a holder. And I'm going to take a normal tri-wing bit, and I'm going to take and flatten it down on the grinder to this shoulder, and then hopefully take a ball end mill, and round it off to match the contour of that screw. Now, I will tell you this, this is not exactly the smartest thing to do because these bits are hardened and they will shatter um, if you're not careful on the grinder with them uh, and if you're not careful when in use. So just a little tip right there to do this. Is this a good idea? No. Is it the easiest idea? No. Am I stupid for doing it? Yes. So let's get started. How we look? Oh, we're almost there. Look at that right there. Pardon the grinder noise, but there we are. If I can get focused in the camera here, focus. If we can look at that right there, we see the flattened off tip. Now let's see if we can get a ball end mill, stick it in the milling machine, and round it down. This is our milling machine, and I don't know if you can tell, but it's in our very hot machine shop. I am sweating to death. But we're going to use this to make uh, the radius for my custom tool. Am I allowed to touch the milling machine? No. But is my boss here right now to tell me no this specific time? Well, no, he's not. So I'm just going to assume it would be okay for me to use it this time versus all of the other times. All right, so let me show you the cutter we'll be using. Now, this is a very large, this is a three quarters or an inch uh, ball end mill. But what I'm looking for is the radius here. I'm just going to come down and kiss it and I want to make the radius that will match that screw head. That is what my goal is here. I'm not actually going to be cutting per se, but I want to make that radius on top of that bit. So if you've never seen how a milling machine works, so uh, there are these things called collets here. And uh, so they hold your tool and they slide up into uh, the taper of the machine. So if you look at this tool here, you see the shank is um, completely um, smooth and so that slides up in the hole in the collet and then these um, flutes uh, when the machine compresses this taper that holds the shank of this and then that holds it up inside of the machine so let's get this inserted all right so we'll do this first because uh, the collets are keyed and then very carefully slide our tool up in there and then there is a screw that goes down if you can see this collet being pulled up in here, there's a screw that goes down and pulls uh, that collet up in there. And then we'll take and just um, tighten her down and we are ready to go. Okay, so I've got it mounted here in the vise. The problem is I have uh, no parallels uh, to hold this piece up, it's too thin. So it's just kind of clamped freely here in the vise. And then, of course, I just kind of eyeballed the center of the ball end mill in the middle of it. But I'm sure it'll be fine. But this is, this is the real bad part because I'm not sure if this is going to shatter when I put a little pressure on it. So uh, let's see how this goes.
Okay, well, let's see here how that radius turned out. Are you going to be hot? I bet you were going to be hot. Oh, aha, there you are. My goodness. All right, let's take a look at this thing and see how we did. Well, that's not looking too bad at all. That's a good looking radius. So let's take it back to the grinder, file down some of these teeth and see if it'll fit the screw. Okay, I'm going to try to very, very carefully just sharpen these teeth ever so slightly so they'll fit down in the screw slots. Well, that didn't really work at all. It just kind of ground down to nothing. So uh, let me at least try it on the screw, but I think we need to go back to the shop and talk about what we did and what we learned and how we can apply it to our lives. Okay, boys and girls, what did we learn today? We learned that it's okay to fail sometimes. You're not going to get everything right. It's okay. And then you realize that you're an adult and that that's not good. Well, I'll call this a 60% um, success. The grinding went well and the uh, using the end mill to shape the bit went well. The only problem I had was when I tried to grind the flutes on the grinder. I should have done that hand filing, but I didn't think about that. I was in a hurry. And so, you know, I'm counting a 60% success. I'll probably end up getting these screws out, taking a pair of pliers and very carefully just working them out by the edges of the uh, screw head. So stay tuned for part two where we actually do take this thing apart and see how they built electronics back in the 70s. Also, special thank you to Pro Technologies, of course, for sponsoring this video. This is the Pro Technologies lab where I design all the BMSs and this is the engineering part of the building. And then we, of course, we have our machine shop out there uh, that I used without permission, but I used it. And I did not break too many things. So I think that's a win. I think that's a win, but uh, of course, if you need a custom battery pack or you would like um, to see more uh, videos, let them know, sales at protechnologies.com. Uh, uh, thank you everyone so much for watching this video. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I will see everyone in part number two where we actually take this thing apart. I just realized this is company property, and I just destroyed it. I'm going to be in trouble tomorrow, aren't I?